Today on Ham Radio Q&A, I open the mailbag and answer your questions, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, the summer months are upon us, so that means more outdoor operation activities. I know it's a busy month ahead, so I'm, I'm planning some really fun videos coming up over the next few weeks. So please stay tuned to the end to hear more about them. But first, let's get into your questions. Well, APRS is a pretty hot topic on my channel, and I've been, I'm planning more videos on that subject. But first, you know, here's a couple of follow-up questions from the recent advanced APRS features of the ASU FTM 400 dual band mobile radio. So starting with our comment, uh, first comment from Brett, he says, great video, keep up the good work. Is there an emergency beacon that can be turned on? I just purchased a 400 to take to the mountains to use uh, for, on the trails. I wanna know more how to broadcast my position if we find someone who needs emergency help. Thanks, from Brett. Well, Brett, there isn't a, a method to send an APRS position tagged as an emergency packet, uh, which then will trip alarms on people's home stations. But those, and other, other radios, but those messages are often ignored, you know, due to the lack of uh, people just not watching them, or many times, more often than not, uh, the, the stations that are emitting these beacons are misconfigured. So a lot of times those messages are just plain uh, ignored. You know, I think that, you know, if you're part of an, an emergency situation, you know, I'm gonna, I'd, I'd do like these three things. First, I'd beacon from your fixed location and change your status text indicating, you know, this is an emergency. Number two, call out on the APRS channel via the voice alert feature uh, to see if there's any nearby stations to respond. And three, try to establish contact on your local repeater. Next, Sean asks, so I'm stuck on A band and B band when it comes to uh, the APRS frequency as well as programming frequencies into the A and the B bands. Uh, does this mean I can program the A band with VHF freaks, both analog and digital, even though A band is also for the UHF side? Uh, please straighten me out on this issue I'm having. I guess it's up to the owner of the radio on how they program their APRS frequency, thanks. Most people use the B band for the APRS channel and the A band for everything else. Uh, the ASU FTM 400 is a dual band, dual VFO uh, transceiver, so you can have a variety of analog UHF and VHF frequencies on the A band and VHF and UHF frequencies on the B band. But um, only the A band can have the digital C4M system fusion uh, frequencies as this radio only has one digital vocoder. So um, there's many different ways you can set up your radio um, as the day is long. Uh, but the way that I have my radio channel set up is I have all of my um, uh, most used uh, two meter and 70, 70 centimeter uh, repeaters on the A channel, simplex frequencies, and then all of my traveling channels as I usually have the APRS running on the B band. So like I said, APRS, and then for me, APRS is on the B band, uh, some infrequently used uh, repeaters, and then all of my simplex channels, I usually stick on the, on the B band. Uh, so that's the way I got my radio set up. Hope that helps you out. 66 echoes a common question I've received. A voice alert, well, that would have been a good one to go over. And that's, um, that is true. I've had quite a few requests um, ever since I've started doing APRS videos with ASU FTM 400. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about voice alert. Well, the voice alert feature allows you to call out on the APRS channel and any other capable receiving station will break audio uh, through the speaker. Now, the purpose of the voice alert is that when you see another um, nearby station pop up on your, on your display, you can make a quick voice call to them and, they can change, and then you too can change to another frequency. Now, the way the alert works is that you set your radio to transmit a 100 hertz subaudible tone uh, during the transmission. Uh, this is used as a filter as digipeters won't retransmit a transmission with a subaudible tone. And then the radio will filter out uh, the packets without the tone. So you don't, so you won't hear the background noise on the APRS channel. So to set up the voice alert feature, well, go to the, on the FTM 400, go to the APRS menu and select option 32, voice alert. Change the alert mode from normal, which actually means off, to tone SQL or tone squelch. Then I'll leave the tone squelch value set to 100 hertz. Now, when you receive a voice alert message, the radio will beep 
and pass the audio. You can then carry on a quick conversation on the APRS channel to coordinate a frequency change for um, a longer voice conversation. But please note that this function does use resources on the APRS channel, so please keep those voice conversations very short. Short enough that all you're doing is moving to another frequency. Speaking of APRS, I received this question from Brian about SMS gate. Uh, do you have to register with SMS gate or can you do this without registering with them? I might be confusing myself here. Well, no registration is necessary to use the SMS gate service. All you need to do is to send a message to SMS gate and it works automatically. You can register with the service on the website to create an alias, but really that's not, that's not a necessary step. I did get a couple of comments about SMS gate not working properly for a few people. Uh, they'd, like, um, they'd be able to send messages just fine, but couldn't receive any acknowledgments. This had to do, I think this has to do in a part with uh, one-way eye gates. Some hams will set up an APRS eye gate that only listens to the APRS channel and feeds the packets to the APRS internet stream, but it won't take those packets from the stream and transmit them over the air. This halfway approach may be convenient as you can use an old scanner or an SDR dongle um, as your eye gate receiver, but it also cripples the utility of the APRS mode in the channel. So if you're thinking of putting up an eye gate in your area, please make it a two-way eye gate. You know, I'm, I'm planning to do a video on eye gates in the near future, so you know, watch out, watch out for that. It might, you might find it helpful. I did get a couple of questions about the recent Chameleon NCOM3 base antenna review we did. Uh, David writes, Interesting, but it would have helped my understanding to have a drawing of where the antenna went to and the height of both ends and the directions of the wire. And did you use a tuner in this situation? Well, I probably should have created a little diagram of the installation. Uh, basically, you know, we went uh, for an in, uh, inverted L style installation with the majority of the wire being horizontal, about 30 feet off the ground. Uh, the, Wire went to the north, uh, the building is oriented east-west, and uh, the counterpoise is about uh, 52 feet long, and it was just um, laying alongside the foundation of the building there. Uh, we did use a tuner as the SWR on uh, this NFED antenna. It's going to be about 1.5 to 1 to about 3 to 1, depending on the frequency and the band that you're, you're using. Uh, most NFEDs, though, will tune uh, with the automatic tuner that uh, you have in your rig. So if you've got a if you've got a newer transceiver with an auto tuner, uh, you can you should be able to attune an in fed antenna with it just fine. Our initial thoughts in using this antenna is is that we were going to um, use it with the uh, the Heathkit tube transmitter. Um, so it that's a little bit more forgiving. Um, you can you can kind of load up those a uh, little bit higher SWR antennas and it works just fine. Uh, but since we at the last moment we switched to the ICOM transceiver, we did use an external tuner um, as that ICOM didn't have a built-in tuner. And it worked just fine with that. Well, that's it for this month's questions. Please keep them coming. As for topics for this coming month, well, AWRL Field Day is fast approaching, and I'll be active with our local club's uh, Field Day event. Uh, you can look forward to you know, maybe one or two videos on that. I also have a couple of product reviews coming up, including uh, this mystery um, item that's in this box right here. So you'll want to stay tuned for that. We'll have at least two videos on it. And you know what? It's summertime, so you can expect a lot more outdoor operating type videos. I don't want to be stuck in this shack here all summer. So um, that's, what you, that's what's coming up for the next few weeks. For more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. So if you like this video, give me that big thumbs up. And also uh, check out some of the other videos that are recommended alongside there, though, also. And also, if this is your first time watching, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell notification. Pressing the bell will um, alert you when new videos are released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.